This is Joe with Cloud First Labs, here to show you how to integrate SharePoint with MuleSoft RPA. For this example, we're going to take a CSV file such as this um, and drop it into a SharePoint folder. And from there, um, SharePoint is going to kick off a MuleSoft RPA process, which will use the elements from this CSV file to create a quote within an application. Um, the application is Salesforce. It might not be the best real world use case because Salesforce has a lot of APIs, but you know, this type of thing can be used for um, you know, RPA processes for doing kind of swivel chair type tasks. So um, you know, to start out, let's set up the SharePoint side of things because SharePoint's gonna have to call that MuleSoft RPA process. Uh, so we are going to base it off of uh, dropping a file into this testing folder of this SharePoint. And um, I'm going to come here to integrate, power automate, create a flow. And um, I'm going to go to see your flows. And from here, I'm going to do new flow automated cloud flow. Um, so here I'm going to call this um, call MuleSoft RPA on edit file. And we want to do this when a file is created, but not for OneDrive for business. We want this for SharePoint. So I'm going to search file created. And when a file is, that one's deprecated. So I'm going to do when a file is created, properties only. So that is our trigger. It's based off of SharePoint. So with SharePoint, we're going to pick our SharePoint site address and library. And then in my case, um, you know, I'm going to set an advanced parameter down here to go to look just at one specific folder. In my case, I want the shared documents testing folder. And with that, we have our trigger. After this trigger, we want to add an action. Um, this first action, uh, MuleSoft RPA process, in this case, if you've seen our other videos on setting up an, a MuleSoft RPA process to be invocable via HTTP and Postman, you'll know that we set that up with um, OAuth 2.0 credentials. That's how the authentication and authorization is handled. So um, our first step here is going to be um, an HTTP call. Um, we are going to do a, an HTTP action, and I'm going to name this um, get OAuth token for RPA API call. And in this case, um, we are going to enter a request URL. We're going to send the re request in this token URL. And we want to do a post. Um, in this case, um, I already, you know, I've got a username and password that, um, you know, I plugged in to base64 and code.org. And let's say my password or my username was ABCD and my password was EFGH, I did an encode. That's going to give me you know, this output. I already did that earlier. Um, so with my actual username and password, uh, my client ID and client secret for OAuth. So um, I'm just going to paste in here um, as a header, authorization, and then basic, and then the base64 encoded username colon password. Um, so that, that's a standard for how you do authentication, like basic auth. So we're going to do that. And we're also going to set content type equal to application slash JSON. And then in the body, we are going to pass the grant type. And with that, so that's a, a JSON request that we're going to send to this URL. We're going to post it. We're going to send these headers. 
And that's going to get us back a JSON response with, um, with an access token. So if I were to run this in Postman, for instance, if I run this same request in Postman, I'm going to get back a response that looks like this. And we're going to care about this access token field. The next step that we need to do now that we have requested that OAuth token, we need to parse that out of the response. So we are going to add an action, a parse JSON action. Here we go. Um, we're going to add a parse JSON action, and um, we're going to use for the content. Um, we're going to use from a previous thing. We're going to use the body from that get OAuth token API call, and for a schema, let's do um, let's paste a sample JSON payload, which is going to be that one from Postman over here. This will generate a schema for us, so then it kind of it knows what to parse. So that's all we need for that step, and we're going to use the output of this in the next step, which is going to be another HTTP call. This HTTP call is going to be to our RPA API URL. Um, you know, I won't go through all the steps that it um, takes to find this URL, but you can find it in any point exchange after you publish your RPA into production phase with an invocable run configuration. So I've got my URL here uh, for my specific um, RPA process that I want to kick off. And we're going to do a put in this case. And for headers, we're going to, I'm going to grab the same authorization header that we used. Or, oh, no, no, we're not going to, sorry. We're going to have a different authorization header. Um, so I'll come back to that. But we need the same content type application slash JSON. And now for the authorization header, now we're going to use the output of here. Actually, we're going to use the output of this parse JSON step um, because that parses it from the RPA OAuth token call. So we are going to say bearer because that's just the syntax here um, that gets used. And then we need to find a dynamic um, dynamic field. And we're going to use the body access token from the parse JSON step. So that is going to pass that access token from this API call. Um, we're going to, or from this OAuth token call, we're going to use that access token as a bearer token here. And in our body, let's go ahead and start generating the JSON body that we're going to send. Um, in this case, execution ID, this is what is going to um, give an ID to uh, the MuleSoft RPA process. So if we want to look up the status of the running RPA process, we can do it using this execution ID. So for this, I'm going to use the, um, the name, the name of the original file that was created. Um, so I'm going to do that. It's going to use the file name without the extension for the execution ID. And then I'm going to set some input arguments. I'm only, I only actually care about one. I'm going to send the file name, the file name from that was um, added initially. This particular RPA process takes that in as an activity parameter called SharePoint file name. And I'm going to plug in file name with extension. Uh, because that RPA process under the covers is going to use that file name and know where to go download that file from SharePoint and then use the file contents to do the RPA work. So I'll name this R or this HTTP step kick off MuleSoft RPA via API call. 
And with that, we have our flow set up. So, um, you know, now that it is ready to go, I'm going to, um, we could test it. I'm going to go ahead and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and test it. It would also, actually, I'll test it by just running it. Um, because what we'll see, if we come out here to my flows, we'll see this is um, called Mulesoft RPA on added file, and it is turned on. So what I'm going to do now is drop, I showed a file uh, towards the beginning of this video. I showed this CSV file. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop that into this testing folder and um, then this will execute. So if I drop this into the folder, um, you know, it, this checks every now and then. So I'll fast forward to when, um, when this ultimately will um, kick off and we'll see that it, it ran and we'll see what it executed. Something cool about Mulesoft RPA is that while this is running, um, you can actually view the process stream. So um, might take a few seconds for the new image to get streamed here, but, but all right, here we go. We can actually look in at this running RPA process and we can see you know, it's updating every few seconds with the new screenshot. So we're not seeing like the entire navigation around the screen and everything, but we can see what it's doing and uh, you can get a good feel for what is uh, taking place. And boom, we see Joe sample CSV for demo. We're seeing some of the information from that file that we dropped into SharePoint. We're seeing it show up here. So, um, that's, you know, this process streaming aspect of MuleSoft RPA Manager is really cool in that you can watch a live running um, RPA process execution. Here is a little bit more of the running process execution. Um, you know, we see that's one of the values from that uh, CSV file, some product J. And we're going to see that this RPA process is going through and, um, you know, it didn't find that product. And now the RPA process knows to go, since it didn't find it already existing, it's going to go create it. Um, and then it's going to come back around and add it. So, you know, that, that's in the weeds on this, but um, it just demonstrates, one, what this RPA process is doing, and two, it demonstrates how cool the process streaming feature of RPA Manager is. And just a little bit more on this, uh, you can see you can go back and forth uh, between maximized and you know, a smaller view of the currently running RPA process. Okay, the RPA process is now completed. So let's go just see uh, the results of it in Salesforce and the application that we wanted to update based off of the SharePoint file that we added. Um, to do that, I'm going to come out here and, hey, quotes, recent records, Joe sample CSV for demo. And when you look at that, we see um, we see products here, um, some product J, some product K, ZX, ZYX1, some product L. That matches what we found here. Um, in our TSB file that we added to SharePoint. So MuleSoft RPA was able to take that SharePoint file and uh, come through and do useful information in this other application and add these products. So that is how straightforwardly you can integrate SharePoint with MuleSoft RPA. Check back for part two of this video series to see um, a little bit of the under the covers inside of MuleSoft RPA Builder to see how that uh, side of things was built. We won't go into all of the details, but we'll hit some of the key items. Thank you for watching.